How do you know when you should lock in your interest rate? This is a very important topic right now as interest rates have been rising up. Uh, what we do now has changed. I have some great suggestions for you. I also want to address with you and give you a couple of bonuses here today. For example, what can you do if you've locked in your interest rate and rates improve? So my name is Miles Pitcher. I'm the owner of Superior Lending. I'm located in Utah. I've been in the business for 21 years. So let's break this down into three parts of the real estate transaction and how we deal with the rates during those trend, those parts. So number one, let's talk about before you are out shopping for a home and before you've made an offer on the home. This is really the pre-approval time. We have a really excellent option that I am doing for all of my clients. And that is as they come to me to get pre-qualified, we have them send us all of their documents. We have them get their credit pulled so we know exactly where credit scores are. And then we have a great option that we call a lock and shop. We are able to take the current rate, lock in the client, and that lock allows them to shop for 30 days. They need to go under contract in, the, in those 30 days and that rate is still good for them. This protects them if rates jump up during the time they're out shopping, they know what their rate is going to be. They know their worst case scenario. Now, if rates improve, no problem. I can help them get the current lower rate, but the lock and shop gives them some protection and insurance. Once they're under contract, that lock is good for up to 90 days. So they have plenty of time to be able to close the loan. There is no cost to the client for doing this, at least the program that I have available. So I, there's no reason for a client not to take this option and use it in getting out shopping for homes. The second part of this is what to do once you go under contract or you're offering on the home and negotiating. I've shared with you in other videos right now, there are some excellent strategies and I won't go into depth on them, but you should be looking at number one, getting the seller to help pay your closing costs. Number two, is there enough that the seller is contributing for you to be able to buy down your interest rate, either with a permanent buy down or a temporary buy down? Or number three, if you're doing a conventional loan, can you use some of those seller pays to buy out the PMI? These are all great rates to great ways to be able to counteract the higher interest rates that we have going on right now. The third phase that we want to look at is what can you do if you've locked in a rate, you're still in underwriting, and in that time period rates start dropping down? Can you just take advantage of that? Um, I guess you could go and start the file over with another lender, but you may not have time to do so. That puts you at risk of not being able to make make your deadlines. With my lenders that I work with, we have built into every single loan an option of floating down your rate. This is really cool. You can ask your lender about it. Can you float down my rate? The float down policy typically requires a significant improvement in rates. And that, so if rates have just dropped an eighth, it's not really gonna help you too much. But if they've moved down, my rule of thumb is about three-eighths in interest rate, then we can look at doing a float down policy. Now, sometimes that float down may come with a fee, uh, and I would invite you to look and see, with that fee being in place right now and how much you're saving per month, divide that out and see if the break even makes sense. Is it worth it to pay that fee to get the float down? Sometimes I'm able to do the float down for free for my clients. Other times there's a small fee that goes with it. In the end, you need to be communicating really well with your loan officer as far as when you're locking and you can even look on your loan estimate. It will show you in the on the front page in the top right hand corner, is your rate locked and how long is that lock good for? Just so you're aware, the longer the lock is, the higher your rate is going to be. That's how they, they build in those longer locks by 
adding it into your interest rate. So the shorter the lock that you can do, typically 30 days or less, there's going to be no hit or penalty to the interest rate. Make sure you're working with an experienced loan officer that is aware of what is happening with the direction or trend of the mortgage interest rates because there are times when it does make sense to float your rate as you get closer to your closing. You may see some improvements. Our trend recently, and I'm recording this right at the end of September 2022, has been rates have been getting worse. Therefore, we want our clients to get locked in as soon as possible, do the lock and shop, and have that protection in place. But if rates have been getting better and better and better, then there, there can be some advantages to floating a little bit longer. I will post down in the description a link to a gentleman's website where he talks about the trends and gives predictions on whether you should lock or float. That's his advice on things. He, he's pretty good. The rates that he lists on the website are super high. Uh, so ignore the rates, but you can look at his advice and he, he will give you a good description of what is happening in the market. Or you can just work with a experienced loan officer who can give you guidance and let you know what what's happening. Let's take a minute and check out what's happening with our interest rates. Rates have taken a pretty big blow. Uh, last week or since the Fed raised 75 basis points, the market, the bond market, felt like the Fed was behind and still not getting ahead of what was happening with inflation. And so we've continued to get worse. This chart, as a reminder, is an inverse chart. So as it moves down, you will see rates get worse. Uh, we've had a couple of days recently where rates have slightly improved. But man, if you look at those big red bars that have moved downward, that means rates have spiked up. So just a reminder that, man, if you're following rates online, uh, they are really not the greatest rates online. I am finding that my rates are about a half a percent better than what's being advertised on Google or other places. So just make sure that you're working with a mortgage broker to help you get the best rates. We do believe that inflation is going to top out here in November and start coming down. Um, and as inflation starts getting under control, that's going to bring mortgage rates back down.